Ever since astronomers discovered the existence of planets outside our solar system, only one question has dominated our minds. Is Earth the only habitable planet in the universe? While the answer to this question remains elusive, astronomers have made significant progress in the discovery of planets that may have conditions similar to our home planet. The latest report suggests that a habitable super-Earth has been found just 37 light-years away. Let's take a closer look. It's kind of amazing to realize that in the past couple of decades, we have confirmed detections of over 4,000 exoplanets, or planets orbiting other stars. This is but a tiny fraction of the estimated trillion exoplanets roaming the Milky Way galaxy, but it's still way better than we had in the 20th century. As soon as astronomers started finding exoplanets, they realized what a wonderful zoo we live in. Planets orbiting dead remnants of stars. Planets bigger than Jupiter orbiting closer to their star than Mercury does the Sun. Planets so hot that they rain lead. Purple planets and the super-Earths. Rocky planets slightly larger than the Earth orbiting within the habitable zones of their parent stars, the place where liquid water can potentially exist on a planetary surface and where life like our own has the best shot of surviving. First, we have to be clear about what we mean by habitable. As some wild worlds in our solar system stretch far beyond what we would consider normal. After all, no other known planet is quite like Earth. The other small, rocky planets in our solar system are either barren wastelands or nightmarish hellholes. The gas giants, with their deep, crushing atmospheres, are ruled out. That means that, in our survey of super-Earths, we need to find planets that look and act a lot like our planet. This includes sitting within the habitable zone of a star to make sure the temperatures are just right, as well as having atmospheres that are relatively thick but not too thick. These planets also need to have liquid water on the surface, not locked beneath a frozen crust or boiled away into a vapor. And lastly, they must have a magnetic field to protect that atmosphere and liquid water from the constant brutal onslaught of the solar wind. There are a lot more criteria that need to be in place for a world to host life, but without these base conditions, the chances of something growing in an alien world are pretty slim. Astronomers generally define a super-Earth as any planet between the size of Earth and ten times more massive. Astronomers tend to call planets larger than that many Neptunes, but that clean distinction disguises a lot of nuances that are important for determining habitability. Something closer to the size of Earth has a better chance of being habitable because, presumably, it's very similar to Earth. And something closer to the size of Neptune probably would not be a very fun place for life to find a foothold because Neptune in general isn't all that hospitable. As planets go up in mass, a rocky core gets better and better at hanging onto a thick, gassy atmosphere because of its enhanced gravity. Eventually, there will be so much atmosphere that the planet would be better characterized as a gas giant than a rocky world. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, we lack a clear dividing line between those two extremes, and super-Earths bridge that gap. This is where the orbit matters, too. If a planet is too close to its parent star, regardless of its size, it's just going to get roasted. Ultimately, a habitable super-Earth needs to have the right density, indicating that it's not too rocky or too gassy. Even then, it's only a guess, as astronomers have scant information about any particular exoplanet. As for the magnetic field of any exoplanet, this is a matter of pure speculation. Scientists think planets larger than Earth are likely to host strong magnetic fields fields, but it's impossible to know for sure. For example, while Venus and Earth are roughly the same sizes, only Earth has a substantial magnetic field. Out of all the planets, moons, asteroids, and comets in our solar system, only Earth has liquid water on the surface and is capable of supporting life, at least as far as we know. That's because our planet sits in the habitable zone of our solar system. It's far enough from the sun so that all of our water doesn't boil away, but close enough so that it doesn't freeze. While scientists love studying all discovered exoplanets, they are particularly interested in the ones that could support life. Life as we know it requires liquid water, so exoplanets in their star's habitable zones are compelling places to search for life. We sometimes call these exoplanets Goldilocks worlds because they're not too hot and not too cold. Earth's average distance from the Sun is 92,900,000 miles, which is also called an astronomical unit. However, it's important to note that an exoplanet at this distance from its star might not necessarily be in the habitable zone. That's because stars have a wide range of temperatures. 
An exoplanet orbiting a cooler star has to be much closer than an exoplanet orbiting a hotter star for liquid water to exist. While each planet in our solar system is unique, the eight planets can generally be grouped into two different categories. The inner rocky planets such as Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and outer gas giants such as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Earth is the only planet in our solar system's habitable zone. Mercury and Venus are not in the habitable zone because they are too close to the Sun to harbor liquid water. However, evidence suggests that the Sun used to be much dimmer. Venus may have once had oceans, but its proximity to the brightening Sun caused the liquid water to evaporate. The escape of liquid water from Venus's surface may have directly led to the planet's current inhospitable, dense atmosphere. Mars, which is too far from the Sun to be in the habitable zone, once had flowing liquid water. Our robotic space missions there have found evidence of ancient lakes and minerals that could only have formed in water. In 2018, scientists found evidence for a subsurface lake using radar on the European Space Agency's Mars Express spacecraft. As evidenced by the possibility of a subsurface lake on Mars, there are ways a planetary body can be far outside the habitable zone and still harbor liquid water. Underneath its icy outer crust, Jupiter's moon Europa has a liquid ocean that contains more than twice the amount of water on Earth, even though Europa is significantly smaller than our planet. NASA's Europa Clipper mission will launch in the mid-2020s on a mission to determine if Europa's subsurface ocean could support life. Is liquid water the only way a planet could support life? Possibly not. As we explore the cosmos, we might find organisms that are wholly different from the carbon-based life we are accustomed to here on Earth, but our search starts by using our Earth as a template. A planet's surface temperature depends not only on its proximity to its star, but also on such factors as its atmospheric greenhouse gases, its reflectivity, and its atmospheric or oceanic circulation. Moreover, internal energy sources such as radioactive decay and tidal heating can warm a planet's surface to the melting point of water. These energy sources can also maintain subsurface reservoirs of liquid water, so a planet could sustain life without being within its star's habitable zone. Earth, for instance, has a thriving subsurface biosphere, albeit one that is composed almost exclusively of simple organisms that can survive in oxygen-poor environments. About 40 planets, including the nearest extrasolar planet, Proxima Centauri b, and three planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system, have been found that are both roughly Earth-sized and orbiting within the habitable zones of their stars. Astronomers have also used simulations of the climates of other extrasolar planets such as Kepler 452 b to determine that they could have surface water under the right climatic conditions. The location of a star's habitable zone also depends upon its mass. Smaller stars like the Sun survive far longer than do high-mass stars. High-mass stars have lifetimes of only millions of years, whereas advanced life took billions of years to develop on Earth. Thus, even if Earth-like planets formed around high-mass stars at distances where liquid water was stable, it is unlikely that B9 conditions would exist long enough on these planets for life to form and evolve into advanced organisms. At the other end of the mass spectrum, the smallest, faintest stars can last for trillions of years. However, these cool dwarf stars emit almost all of their luminosity at infrared wavelengths, which may be difficult for life to harness, and they typically display larger luminosity variations than do sun-type stars. Additionally, for a planet to remain within the habitable zone of a faint star, it would have to orbit so close that tidal forces raised on the planet would cause the same hemisphere always to face the star. As a result, there would be no day-night cycle, and the planet's atmosphere, unless it was sufficiently thick, would freeze under the surface of the cold, perpetually dark hemisphere. Moreover, the high temperatures within the habitable zones of faint stars suggest that such planets are likely to lack the atmospheric gases required by life. The latest reports state that astronomers have discovered a super-Earth orbiting a red dwarf star just 37 light-years from our solar system. The exoplanet Ross 508b skims the so-called habitable zone of its parent star, the area in which surface temperatures are suitable to allow for the existence of liquid water, a key ingredient of life. The newly discovered exoplanet has about four times the mass of Earth and was discovered using a new infrared monitoring technique. The proximity of this super-Earth to our planet means it is ripe for atmospheric investigation, which could help researchers determine whether life could exist around low-mass stars. Red dwarfs like Ross 
Tross 508, which has about one-fifth of the mass of the Sun, are small stars that account for around three-quarters of all stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. These stars are especially abundant in the region around our solar system, making red dwarf stars and their systems ideal targets for the search for planets outside the solar system and the investigation of possible life elsewhere in the universe. The fact that red dwarfs are small means that they are cool, with temperatures of between 2,000 and 3,500 Kelvin. Their relatively low temperatures make them dim in visible light, unlike larger stars, and this means astronomers must study them in infrared. To do this, the Astrobiology Center in Japan developed an infrared observational instrument called the Infrared Doppler Instrument to mount on the Subaru Telescope in Hawaii. With this instrument, the world's first high-precision infrared spectrograph for an 8-meter class telescope, the astronomers set about searching for signs of planets around red dwarf stars. Specifically, the researchers looked for the telltale wobble that an exoplanet causes in the orbit of its parent star. The wobble registers as a tiny shift in the wavelength of light from the star as it moves toward and away from Earth. The discovery of Ross 508b marks the first success for the project, which is officially named the IRD Subaru Strategic Program. Ross 508b, just the third planet to be found around such a low-mass star, has an average distance from its parent star of just 1 20th times the distance between Earth and the Sun. The astronomers who discovered it believe that the planet's highly elliptical orbit carries it into Ross 508's habitable zone every 11 days. Astronomers have stated that the planet is the first successful detection of a super-Earth using only near-infrared spectroscopy. Before this, in the detection of low-mass planets such as super-Earths, near-infrared observations alone were not accurate enough, and verification by high-precision line-of-sight velocity measurements in visible light was necessary. While this discovery is exciting and the planet will be studied for years to come, astronomers hope that the new method will help them find even better candidates for a habitable planet in the future. If you like this video, please check out this one, which talks about the JWST and its detection of carbon dioxide on WASP 39b. Do you think humans can survive on the surface of Ross 508b? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.